Hello everyone, my name is Shalinda Chaudhary and in this video I'll be explaining about the network policy in Kubernetes. This is also one of the most important topic for Kubernetes security certification exam. So let's start. Basically network policies are the firewall rules which work at OSI layer 3 or 4 which is a network layer. And the scope of the network policy is limited to namespace only, which means we have to define separate network policies for different namespaces. By default, all the pods can communicate with each other within namespace as well as inter namespaces as there is no network policy defined. So to make Kubernetes cluster security compliant, a default deny blanket policy is created first, which will block all the communication between the pods and then specific network policies are created wherever we need pod to pod communication. So network policies are defined in three ways, pod based policy, namespace based policy and IP based policy, which I'll show by demo in this video. There is one important point to note that if we have defined default deny policy, then for communication from pod one to pod two, we have to create egress policy for pod one so that data can go out and ingress policy for port 2 to receive the traffic. So let's talk about the default deny policy. So default deny policy will block all the ingress and the egress traffic in the namespace. And this is the snippet of the default deny policy. So the kind is network policy in the metadata name is defined, which is default deny all you can give any name. Namespace is not defined here, which means this policy will be applied on the default namespace. If you want to apply this policy to a specific namespace, then you have to define the namespace here, which will which I'll show you in the demo. There is nothing defined in the pod selector. That means this policy will be applied to all the pods and this policy types are ingress as well as egress. So the communication for both ingress and the egress traffic will be blocked. Let's check the scenario one. In the scenario one, we'll first create a namespace development. And then we'll create two pods. One is application pod, another one is database pod. And by default, all the communication will happen between application and database pod. And once the default deny policy will be applied, then the communication will stop. So let's see this in demo. I have Kubernetes two node cluster ready. So let's check the nodes. So it has one master node, another worker node. So first of all, let's create a development namespace. Namespace is created now and now we'll create two pods. First one will be app pod. Another one will be DB pod. Let's select the namespace. And using the run command, we'll create both the pods and we'll choose the image as nginx first one is created now the db port and the db port is also created let's check the pod status both the pods are running in the development namespace now now create the service for these namespaces so that they can expose port 80. First service is created. Same for the DB port too. Let's check the service created. We can see now two cluster IP services are created for both app port as well as DB port. Now from app pod, we'll try to reach out to db pod. This is exit command. Now we are into the pod. Let's do the curl on db pod. And you can see a welcome to nginx page is displayed. So this means the communication is working. Let's check the same from db pod. And there is another way instead of going into the bash and running from inside within the container, we can run directly from here. And you can see the communication from both DB to app and app to DB is working fine. 
So now let's create a default deny policy. It'll be a ML file. And for policy, let's navigate to Kubernetes documentation. This is network policy documentation and we'll go directly to default deny all ingress and egress traffic. Let's copy this policy. And paste it here. And we'll make the required changes. First, we'll change the name from default deny and pod selector. It will be for all the pods and let's add the namespace too because we are assigning this policy and on the namespace development. Policy is created now. Let's apply this policy or create this policy. Now the default deny policy is created. And then development in the development namespace get network policies and you can see default deny policy is there now again go back to app pod and run the same curl command as you can see now the app pod can't reach to db pod because all the ingress as well as the egress traffic is blocked try the same thing from db pod and same is happening here. That means the communication between the pods within the namespace is now blocked. So let's go back to our slide deck. Now for allowing the traffic, we have to define specific policies, both the egress as well as ingress policies. And there are three different types of policies. First one is IP based policy, where we have to define the IP block. This can be defined both in the ingress as well as egress namespace based policy where if we want the traffic from one namespace to another, then we have to define the namespace selector. And the third one is pod based policy where we have to define the pods and this will be specific to that particular pod. You can define the ports. If you'll not define the ports, it will be applicable for all the ports. So let's move to scenario number two. In this scenario, we have namespace development, which is already there app pod and db pod both are already there now we want the communication from app pod to db pod so we'll define the egress policy on app pod so the traffic can go out and ingress policy on the db pod so that it can accept the traffic from app pod so let's check this in demo let's first create the egress policy for app pods this will be aml file i'll copy the code All these YAML files I have uploaded in GitHub and I have provided their link in the description of this video. So the name is allow egress namespace is development. It's selecting the pod based on its labels, which is run app pod. This policy will be applied on the app pod and the traffic from app pod can go to DB pod. So here we have defined the pod selector for the DB pod. Let's save this. Let's quickly check the labels of the pods. Show labels. As we created the pods using the run command, so you can see there is a run label applied on both the pods. Now create the ingress policy for the DB pod so that it can receive the traffic from app pod. Let me copy the policy. Same way you can see now the name is changed to allow ingress development namespace. It's applied on DB pod to the app pod. Now both egress and ingress files are created. Let's create the policy now. Let's first create the ingress policy and then create the egress policy. Now both the ingress and the egress policies are created for the pods. Let's quickly check in the development namespace. As you can see, there is a egress policy which is applied on app pod and an ingress policy which is applied on db pod. Now we'll test the communication from app pod to db pod. Still there is no communication and the reason here is because default deny policy is blocking the DNS traffic too. So there is a workaround for this. Either we can allow the DNS traffic in the default deny policy. Another workaround is to provide the IP address of the pod instead of the name. 
as you can see the DV pod IP address is 05 app pod IP address is 04 so let's check the command again instead of the name we'll provide the IP address and we can see our page is reachable again now let's try the same from DB pod I'll provide the app IP address which is 04 and it's not working because we haven't defined the ingress and the egress policy for the communication from DB pod to app pod so that's all for scenario 2 let's go back to slide deck there is a scenario 3 now we'll create another namespace which will be production namespace where we'll create the live pod and now from app pod which is in development namespace we want to connect to production namespace live pod first of all we'll create the default deny policy in the production namespace so that all the traffic are first blocked and then we'll allow the traffic within the different namespaces so let's check this in demo first create the namespace namespace production is created in the production namespace let's create one live pod image will be the same nginx let's check if the pod is running you can see the live pod is running now let's create the default deny policy for the production namespace this is the default deny policy namespace is production and it will be ingress and egress policy let's change the name to production create the policy now now the policy is created in the production namespace too as you can see the default deny production policy is there so that means the communication from the app pod to the live pod is not happening and it's the same vice versa now we'll create the egress network policy for app pod so that it can communicate to the pod in the production namespace and we'll create the ingress policy for live pod so that it can receive the traffic from the app pod which is in development names so let's first create the egress policy so in this policy we have defined the name this is from the development namespace this will be applied on the app pod this will be egress policy and instead of the pod selector we have given the namespace selector and the namespace is production let's save this now before creating this policy we have to create the namespace label on the production namespace YAML. so you can see there is only one label right now but we have defined the ns label so let's assign this label now the production label is assigned let's create the egress policy egress policy is created now now we'll create the ingress policy for the live pod which is in production namespace so this is a network policy with the name ingress namespace this is for production namespace this will be applied on the live demo pod this is an ingress policy and the namespace selector will be for development same way before creating this policy we'll assign the label on development namespace as you can see the label is assigned to the development namespace too let's create the policy allow ingress namespace same way as you can see there will be an egress policy defined in the development namespace i have forgot to create the service for the live pod let me create the service expose pod live pod on port 80 so the now service is created now let's first check the ip address of the pod because the name resolution will not work the ip address is 0 0.6 so let's try the communication from app pod to live pod and you can see the welcome page so our network policies are working so that's all for the demo there are a lot of things which you can do using the network policies and it is one of the most important security parameter in the kubernetes so you can use the ip blocks namespace selector 
pod selector you can define different pods based on your requirement i hope you liked my video please like and subscribe to my channel thank you